Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our worldwide podcast studios today is Kyle Nisley. Kyle is a doctor of veterinary medicine student at Iowa State University College of Veterinary Medicine. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Clayton. Pleasure to be on. Kyle, you and I have gotten to know each other here in your fourth year. You spent some time at Carthage doing a, an externship, um, and then we saw each other here in Denver recently at the American Association of Swine Annual Meeting. But for the audience that has not gotten a chance to meet you, Kyle, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, for sure. So uh, like Clayton said, I'm Kyle Nisley. I'm a fourth year at Iowa State College of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, I'll be graduating in May uh, with my DVM, and hopefully I'll be uh, going out into production here just in a couple of months. Uh, and so right now, uh, I'm just finishing up those last couple of rotations and trying to get through the rest of this remaining fourth year. Uh, I'm originally from Grinnell, Iowa. Uh, actually gr- grew up raising Belgian draft horses for an interesting fact, but uh, got into s- swine medicine early on in undergrad and have continued chasing pigs ever since. Kyle, from uh, Belgian draft horses <laughs> to uh, chasing PERS positive pigs during your internship at Swine Vet Center, um, you've come a long ways. <laughs> Talk to us about your project. You looked at um, how to help farmers that are dealing with a very, very, very important disease in our industry right now. What what disease were you looking at and what you do to try and make it better? Yeah, for sure. So uh, during that summer, uh, there was kind of a start of a really kind of known virus strain uh, that we saw. So PERS virus, huge in the industry, uh, really been known to cause a lot of reproductive losses, uh, and a lot of death loss within the industry. Uh, in growing pigs alone, it costs $361 million a year to the industry. Uh, and so during that summer of 2020 leading into 2021, there was a newly emerging strain of PERS known as PERS 144 Lineage 1C. Um, so really the main thing about that new strain was that it was a highly virulent strain of PERS. And so meaning that it was causing a lot of mortality, a lot more death loss than typically we were seeing in PERS, and so the project was mainly to look at, you know, what ways can we potentially treat any sort of secondary bacterial infections that come about because of PERS. So this uh, this virus is what they call the variant virus, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I've heard um, lots of stories of uh, 30 to 50 percent, you know, finishing mortality being pretty common with it. Um you looked at some treatments of the nursery phase, and did you challenge these pigs with this specific virus, Kyle, or did these pigs come from a farm that unfortunately had been infected with it? Yeah, so uh, these pigs that we saw in the nursery were actually coming from sow farms that had been uh, infected with the PERS-144 variant. Um, so these sow farms broke in 2020 in, in November, Uh, And so these pigs were coming out PERS positive into the nursery. And the main reason that the client was concerned about this virus and its impacts on these nursery pigs was because they were converting and becoming positive in the nursery. And then they were seeing increased mortality, like we were saying here, about 30 to 40 percent mortality in the nursery phase. And so they were curious if there was any sort of ways they could treat that mortality and the PERS virus in the nursery around four to five weeks placed. So what our plan was, was to go in and mass inject with antibiotics in an effort to combat secondary bacterial infections that were happening. Uh, So what we were seeing in the nursery flow was a history of strep suis, uh, GPS or HPS uh, was the old uh, nomage, and ASUS. So pretty typical uh, bacterial infections and secondary bacterial infections that we were seeing in the nursery. Um, And so kind of what you would typically see in a nursery. However, these infections were made worse by the fact that PERS was running rampant throughout the nursery. Yeah. Well, talk to us about the treatments, Kyle. What did you take a look at? Yeah, for sure. So uh, these pigs were placed, and then three weeks later, uh, three acutely ill pigs were taken uh, and selected from uh, the population as kind of representation of what pigs were looking like in the current nursery phase. Uh, and then that's where we went and kind of saw the bacterial infections uh, and saw the different bacteria grow and on culture. Uh, and then a week later, we came in and weighed every single pig, which is a very hard task. I definitely learned that during the summer. Uh, and then four treatment groups were allotted during uh, this trial. So firstly, there was a negative control group, which 
were allowed to be given spot treatments of Batril and Dexamethasone, which is what the farm had currently been using as their spot treatments. Uh, however, they were not given a mass injection of antibiotic for every single pig. Uh, and then three other treatment groups were given, uh, were created throughout the nursery. Uh, so there was Batril and Dexasone, uh, which was one of the treatment groups that were given mass injection of every single pig. And then there was a treatment group that was given Draxin and another treatment group that was given Exceed. And so we, these blocks were then, uh, these groups were then delineated out and they were made even by age and uh, by mortality. And so then they were blocked off according to the room so that there was no room effect. So in certain parts of the room, pigs can grow quicker or slower based on air quality and other things. And so we made sure to uh, make our groups even when it comes to those things. And then uh, we went in and treated every single pig at that four week mark. And then four weeks later, at eight weeks place, we came in, weighed every, every single pig again, uh, and collected different data on the PERS virus within the nursery. So throughout the entire nursery phase, we took oral fluids to kind of document, you know, where is this PERS virus? Where is the CT levels or how much virus is really running within the nursery? Uh, and it was interesting results that we saw throughout that entire nursery phase. So um, in the barns, the, where we collected oral fluids, pre-treatment, about half of the room was positive. The other pigs were negative at this point. However, on the treatment day a week later, it was about the same thing. About half the room was positive, half the room was negative. However, by the end of that trial, four weeks later, the every single pig Every single pen that was tested with oral fluids was positive. So we were seeing really good serial conversion like they had been seeing uh, in that nursery from negative to positive. And Kyle, um, you mass treated the treatment groups for the pens that had control pigs. Did you do any sort of sham inoculation on those pigs? Yeah. So we went, uh, you know, to kind of mimic the stress of injection, we made sure to go in and we just used uh, saline to go in. Uh, and inject these pigs. That way they got the same amount of stress that all the other pigs got during mass injection. Well, and I think stress, but also the PERS, right? Um, it's a yes. very mm -hmm. much a, a bloodborne disease and and the injection process itself may transfer a little virus. So great to hear that you did that because I think that'd be something that would uh, hurt the treatment groups otherwise. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. We definitely tried throughout this entire trial to mimic all of the procedures for the treatment groups, especially the negative control, because I think it's really easy to forget that negative control group. Uh, many times, you know, it's, oh, well, we don't treat that group. We don't touch it at all until the end. Uh, but for us, it was really important to mimic the same injections, the same procedures, same pig movements for all of those uh, negative control pens as well. Excellent. I can already tell that Alyssa was your mentor and not Henry based <laughs> on how well you answered that question. For sure. Uh, yep. So t tell us what happened. I mean, you did a great job of setting up the trial. We've got different uh, treatments assigned. It sounds like the trial was executed very well. What did you learn? Yeah, so uh, I think there was a lot of interesting stuff that came out of this trial. Uh, so firstly, I think bare minimum, you have to start at, okay, are all these pigs starting at the same weight? You know, it's going to be an unfair trial if one treatment group is just starting at a different weight and it's going to throw off the results. But we made sure that at day zero, the mean end weights for all of the different groups were statistically similar. So they were all starting off on the same playing field, the same pigs. And so that was really important for us to begin with. Looking then into the end of the trial, looking at, you know, did we see any different results in mean end weights between the different groups? Uh, we actually saw uh, there was not necessarily anything uh, statistically significant is what we would say in the kind of uh, the research world. But kind of basically saying that, you know, there was maybe some differences in mean end weights, but they weren't necessarily significant when it comes from a statistics standpoint. However, there was a trend for higher mean end weights in the Draxin group as compared uh, to the Exceed group. Uh, and there, Draxin came out as the highest mean end weights when it comes to uh, the day 28 weights. Uh, however, you know, I think the most interesting, interesting results was when you delineated out sources. So this nursery uh, came from two different sow sources. And so one of the sow source pigs, they did end up looking clinically more sick. There was more death loss. There was more coughing. There was more fallout. And so we really wanted to, you know, look at, okay, is there any benefit to treating sicker pigs as compared to healthier pigs 
in the nursery, especially in this case. Uh, and so we were able to tear, take apart the statistics and look at the different sources. And that's honestly, I think, for me, where the most interesting results came from. So looking at the first source, the mean end weights, there was a statistically significant difference in mean end weights of Draxon compared to Exceed, and they and Draxon was easily the highest for mean end weights as compared to all the others. Um, I think another interesting result of that was from that same source, the mean average day of the gain was highest for Draxon as compared to Exceed. Draxon was about a 1.3 average day of the gain pounds per day. Exceed was down to about a 1.15, and Batrol Dex was sitting around the 1.2 mark. So there was some interesting results definitely when it comes to looking at average daily gain and mean end weights when it comes to Draxin. And so I think for this trial, um, Draxin or Tulasromycin, uh, the drug name, really came out on top. Thanks, Kyle, for, for coming on the show. And to the audience, thanks for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And, and please do take the time to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on any of our new episodes. Uh, for Kyle Nisley, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Kyle, thanks very much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Clayton. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health-related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com, and we would love to take a look at your research. Mm-hmm.